So clearly one of the driving benefits is, is still uh, fundamentally driven by wage arbitrage. The, the, the cost of a, a highly trained uh, Java programmer in India today is still one-tenth of that of, of uh, the counterpart in the US. So that is underlying uh, a lot of, of people's initial forays into globalization. Uh, but I think there are many other aspects that come into play once one gets beyond just simply the cost equation. One looks at uh, the opportunity to tap into a talent pool that one otherwise wouldn't have access to. Uh, for instance, here in DC, frankly, it's very hard to find highly skilled Java programmers, especially people who've experienced with R&D. It's very hard to find them. So you almost have to go outside of the DC market to be able to find such individuals. Um, there's also, frankly, the opportunity to tap into people who have very specific, very niche skills um, that may be uh, harder to find. Uh, to tap into people who've got uh, skills that have uh, a global uh, appeal, right? If you're taking a product, in fact, to a global market, then you want to have people whose skills may be in the markets that you're trying to serve, who understand the nuances of those markets. Uh, there's also the opportunity, frankly, to leverage the time difference. People often speak of time difference as, as a challenge, and it certainly can be. Uh, but there are opportunities as you globalize actually to turn that on its head and make it an advantage to actually use, you know, use the full 24 hours of a day to shorten your product timelines and to get products to market faster rather than only uh, you know, leveraging the eight or 10 hour day. So first and foremost, I think a lot of people don't pay enough attention to the difference between IT and R&D. And um, it is still very hard to find people in these emerging markets who have really strong R&D skills. It's increasingly easy to find people who have IT skills, who have the more traditional uh, skills around uh, implementing systems or tying systems together or supporting systems, maintaining systems. But to find people who have skills in research and development, in, in developing ideation, in, in you know, more agile practices, uh, leveraging high levels of automation um, with more domain skills tied into technology skills. These are much harder to find globally. So I think that's the first challenge that people have to address. I think beyond that, the, 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 it's the usual. It's, you know, time zones are a challenge. If you're not used to working across a, uh, an eight or 10 hour time difference, that can be very challenging at first. Uh, without the right practices in place. Working across a culture difference where, you know, yes means very different things in different countries. And uh, if you're not used to that, you think you have uh, an understanding and you don't even begin to have an understanding. Uh, and then, you know, the inherent challenges associated with, with with outsourcing, with, you know, well, that's not us. That's somehow a threat to us. If they succeed, I fail. Uh, and how to uh, structure a relationship in such a way that, uh, that it's not combative, but really collaborative. They have to appreciate the, the distinction between IT and R&D and be really sensitized to that. As they're looking to build a team globally, uh, make sure that they really put an emphasis on people with R&D experience, with R&D backgrounds. It's going to be a huge uh, force multiplier if they do so. It's, it's almost as, as, as great a difference as as uh, you know, the difference between BPO and IT, the difference between IT and R&D is, is, a, is, a, is a major difference. So I think just a, 
an emphasis right there on finding people with the right kind of backgrounds. And, and if they're working through a partnership, finding a partner that has people with the right kind of backgrounds, with the right emphasis on R&D. I think that's step number one. Uh, step two is making sure that your own organization is really aligned with the partner and that you've got you know, a contractual structure, but you've also got a governance model and you've got alignment of individuals' goals such that you, 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 you're structured to succeed and that there isn't going to be, a, uh, you know, that you, that you proactively preempt the natural resistance that you will have to, to adopting this kind of model in the first place. It's not easy, right? It, 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 it takes time and effort and energy to work with an organization, even if it's your own, uh, thousands of miles away. And you need to overcome that inertia, and so you need to proactively uh, uh, tackle that head on. Yeah, so open source is now, I think, really come of age, and, and more and more products that we build leverage open source in increasing degrees. Um, and if you think about the globalization of software, um, it really goes hand in hand with leveraging increasing amounts of pre-built uh, software and componentry so that as you build new products, you have less and less new software to build and you get to leverage more and more uh, out of the box. Uh, there are inherent perils in doing so and you certainly have to be very aware, very savvy uh, before you leverage open source to make sure, especially in a product, it's one thing to use it internally for your internal systems, but as you think about creating commercial products that you're going to take to market and charge people money for, then you have to be very sensitive to uh, the, the legal and licensing implications of doing so, making sure that, you know, for instance, you don't suddenly find that because you've leveraged open source, now your whole product is open source and, and, and other people can, uh, can, can use it free of charge. So uh, there are definitely uh, things that you have to do, and especially as you think about leveraging teams globally, making sure that they're not leveraging software without your knowledge uh, and, uh, and, and therefore creating sort of legal risks uh, to, to the work product you're creating.